On today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to paint a galaxy spiral like this as well as a general starry background. I'd say a massive thank you to the people that have already shown me some support over at my Patreon page. If you're interested to hear more about that and some of the rewards that I offer to my patrons, please check out the link in the description below. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the background. Now by default it will be on a white background colour, but I want to change it to obviously the colour of space. I mean, I guess you could go for something in sort of very deep blues and just make it a touch off from the, the darkest of blacks. So before I even begin on the galaxy shape and spiral itself, I'm going to create a general sort of setting of stars. The way that I'm going to begin that is, first of all, select a hard brush, and I am going to select quite a small size for this, but it doesn't matter in a minute because I'll show you what things I can do to change the scale of that anyway. And I'm going to use two different colour stars. I'm going to use a, like a pale blue, and I'm also going to use a pale orange. I'll start with the pale blue. There's probably going to be more of this colour than there is going to be the orange. So these are the ones I'm going to start with. I'll do them on separate layers. So layer one, I'm going to start with some general sort of blue points. It just takes a few minutes just to do some random stars across the screen. So some of them might be close together, some of them more spaced apart. You just generally want to start filling the screen so that there's no obviously sort of blank areas on the screen. It doesn't need to take too long this, just a couple of minutes. Okay, so I've got enough to begin with for now. I'm going to create another layer, but I'm going to, on the second layer, do some warmer kind of stars. Now initially when you start doing them, they might not be that noticeable. You tend to notice it when you shrink down the scale. So I'll just get some more in before I commit to doing that. Like I said, I don't think I'll do as many of the, the warmer colour. So I just want to sort of break up the, the monotony of the blue and just give it a few points of interest really amongst it. And that'll do for those two layers. I'm quite happy with the, the cold and the what well, the warm and the, the cold colours there. So I am going to merge the two. So I just pinch the two layers together and it should merge them. We're working digitally, so let's use the medium to our advantage. I'm just going to swipe to the left and duplicate the layer. Now what I can do is go to the arrow here and I can move that layer around. So I think just to fill the sky a bit more, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it here and it's instantly created sort of double of the effect. So if I just show you with and without, I'm going to duplicate the layer again. But this time when I select it, I'm going to take the corner and I'm going to drag it down to fill a quarter of that screen or approximately a quarter anyway. I'm going to choose to duplicate that again. Let's select it again. I can now move it to the other quarter here. And I'm going to repeat that process. So I've done that for all four quarters. So I'm going to take the top four, pinch them together like so, and you can see that I've added quite a lot on that area. Now what I'm going to do is duplicate that layer. I'm going to select it again. I'm going to flip it. So I'm really starting to fill up the, the sky now. So what I might do is merge all those layers together. And I think I'm going to duplicate them again. And this time I'm really going to do quite a lot of these smaller ones. I want to get a variety of sizes. Some of these stars are going to be in the distance or much further in the distance. They're going to be much subtler, the effect of them. So this time I'm going to do quite a few of them. I'm going to take that one that I've just created, duplicate it, select it again, move it along. And I'm just going to start to tile them up. want to flip it every now and again just to remove any sense that there might be repetition or bands showing up. You shouldn't really notice that kind of thing anyway. So there we go, we've got thousands of little tiny points of light now. So that's kind of the perfect kind of uh, general spacing. So I've got one main layer there and all the rest are smaller ones. If I think that they're competing too much with the bigger lights, because remember with something from the distance, I guess it would be emitting less light. If I wanted to subdue it slightly, I could just turn the opacity down so you get a bit more of a, a knocking back. So I put it down to the sort of 60, 50%, something in that region. And now if I just show you, some of them are definitely more apparent than others, and that's great. So it means that if you do zoom in, there seems to be depth, more, more and more depth as you zoom in, which is great. So that's for the, the general kind of starry sky. Amongst it though, you would tend to get some that stand out more than others. So I'm going to create another layer, and I'm going to go back around the colour wheel to my coolest colours, 
this time I'm going to move off the hard brush. I want to go to a soft brush this time. I'm going to want the size of the brush quite low, really. Lower opacity. I'm just going to go around the canvas, creating a few areas where there might be some brighter stars. Once I've created some of those, I do need to then go back over them with a white, turn the brush size down, maybe zoom in a little bit. This time just sort of plonk a really bright light right in the centre. That way it's going to give a real focus point of light in the centre of that kind of hazier blue. So I go back to the, the blue and I'll just pick on this one. Just turn the brush size down, turn the opacity way down. It's better to turn it really way down and build it up gradually. Just a slight sense of like a proper star where the, the light is kind of so bright that you get these star bursts. I might do the same for one or two of the others. If you're doing it like this and you're doing one vertical and one horizontal, then you should do them all like that. Don't start twisting them and getting them going in different directions. I think it's just a more of a, a feature of a, a lens that's taking a photograph than anything really. Now these are all on a separate layer, so if I wanted to duplicate that, Again, I could make more of these so I could make smaller versions, move it around, flip it so it doesn't look like an obvious duplication. I could even go onto my colours and change the sort of colour scheme of them so I can turn the richness of them up. I wonder if you can notice it here, but it's here, so it's gone from a blue version to more of an orange version. I could have a green one or a blue one, purpley, whatever colours really. I think I'll stick with a warm one, like an orange. I'm going to start thinking about more of the kind of galaxy spiral features at this point. The way that I'm going to begin that is I'm going to create another layer. So I'm using lots of layers on this, so sometimes I'm creating them, then I'm merging them, then I'm creating more, then merging them, rather than keeping all the layers intact, because you can see I've used lots of layers to create this overall effect, so really it would become completely unmanageable to leave them um, uncondensed, so flatten the layers where necessary, but some of the features of the galaxy spiral now are going to be left as sort of unflattened layers. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my kind of bluish colours. I'm going to make sure that I'm still on the soft brush. I'm going to turn the size of it up and the opacity way down. I just want to test that. There you go. I don't know whether you saw that shift. I just want to create a general kind of lightness in the area. And now I can start to bring the brush size down as I gradually start to flatten that shape out a little bit. So I just wanted to create a sense of overall light in that area. So this is primarily focusing all the attention to this area. The, the galaxy itself is going to be emitting a lot, a lot of light. Now the outskirts of that kind of galaxy spiral is going to be mainly cooler colours, warmer colours in the centre, but I just need to generally show the impact of the, the galaxy in the whole area. I feel like now looking at that layer, I want to change the colour slightly to more towards the purpley end. Not too much, so I'll just show you how I started. Slightly greeny blue, I want to change it to that colour, which is slightly more of a purpley version. Now I'm going to create another layer. I'm using the same brush, but taking the size of it way down. I'm going to start creating the overall kind of arms and texture of the galaxy sort of spiral. So there'd be more individual sort of strands and features now that would start to show up amongst it. Before I do any more, I need to move it more towards the slightly purple end of that. So I'm keeping it quite loose. I'm not doing solid lines and kind of having a broken texture here. So although you might get like a general, even a, a recognizable sort of spinning off arm on the galaxy spiral, it's not going to be one solid line. It's very much kind of like cloud texture really. This time I'm going to go to the warmer end. I'm going to not go for the orange like I was before actually, I'm going to go for a slightly more reddy orange colour. I'm going to do the same kind of thing again, so I'm going to go for a large brush size, really low opacity, but I'm just going to start adding more of the warmth into that middle section. Again, I'm still on the soft airbrush, I'm going to fill in some warm colours just there. So remember this is on a separate layer. So I'm concentrating the colours a bit more towards the centre. Now what I want to do is go to a lighter version of the same thing, turn the brush size down and then start adding more of that in the centre. In fact I might turn the brush size up just to get a slightly bigger shape in that area first. And I can move towards the white, turn it down slightly and really start to focus in that light source in the centre there. As it gets brighter I can really start to reduce the size of the brush. It is going to come to almost like a, a point at the centre. 
think what I'd like to do is create another layer and this time go for something between the orange and the blue which would get me more sort of pinks and purples. I want to show a real kind of range of colours so I'm going to start, that's too bright, I'm still on the white colour aren't I? I need to go back towards the purpley and there's maybe a slightly redder version. I do want it to sort of work with the orange that's there. So in the opacity way down, yeah and I think that's going to work quite nicely actually. It's going to bring the orange and the blue together, just a hint of more of a pinky purple. And if I wanted I can go back to the orange and restate that for the sort of centre area. So if I just have some yellow before it gets to the brightest white colours. So you can see I've transitioned from blue to purple to pinky colours to more of a reddy orange and then more of a yellow before it gets to the white. So that's the general kind of shape and colour scheme. But now what I'm going to start doing is adding more texture into there. So I'm going to use more towards the red. I'm going to turn the opacity down having said that. I do prefer the effect of uh, building things up in subtleties. So now what I'm going to start doing is in this sort of purple area, remember the colour I've chosen is quite a reddy colour anyway, so it's especially suited to this particular area. It's not going to be completely black, it's going to, not going to be so dark, it's definitely going to have some colour in it. Remember this is the top layer now I'm working on, so it's going to go over the light source and areas. You have to kind of find your way with it a little bit. Chances are it's going to get less apparent as it goes behind there, and it's going to be stronger and block out some of that light as it comes out in front of it. So you can probably hear from the clicking of the Apple Pencil, I'm not doing this in solid movements, I'm allowing it to be quite textured. It's not really a brush that's ideal for this, so I'm just using, like I say, the airbrush and just doing the texture manually. So the light source is going to obstruct those shapes, it's going to be behind the light source so you won't see it as dark in the background, but when it comes in front of it, you'll start to see it a bit more vividly. You can follow the line of the spiral, it will kind of link around. It's loose, but it, it does kind of clump together as a general spiral shape. So actually I'm going to move to slightly more the orange, and then when it gets towards the centre this texture is going to be comprised more of a kind of a dark orange. I think it needs to be even brighter. It's going to seem pretty dark next to the, the whitest of whites anyway. I don't want to have it look jet black, I want to inject some warmth into that. I want the texture to look illuminated by the light. I'm going to go back to the dark colour again, the ready version. I'm just going to darken up some of these areas, move it around, maybe a bit more opacity so I can really get some darker areas in there now. Maybe with this it can be even darker, slightly less red in it this time. Maybe some arms of the galaxy spiral seem to be sort of heading off away. One going up in this direction, one coming off this side perhaps. You decide. So I'm just going to darken up some of the texture in the bit that's closest. So you imagine if it's a camera taking a picture, I'm going to do the darker tones in this more foreground area. And then we're going back to my lighter colours and we'll do some more towards the centre. I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to go to my lightest source here, a slightly yellow version of it. I feel like I just want to create a bit more light on the top area here. What I'm going to do next is create another layer. I'm going to go back to my blue tones might be slightly more towards the rich blue rather than the greeny blue. And I'm going to start working some extra areas of light into some of the bits that go around here. So I don't want it to look like the only light source is going to be from the centre. There would be sort of extra concentrations of, I'm not quite sure what it would be called as such really, I'm not an astronomer. Perhaps people who know more about the cosmos could comment in the comments below and actually inform the rest of us what these kind of names of the features are going to be. So there might be some extra sort of illuminated areas around the edges too. 
maybe a little bit of light escaping from out underneath as well. Perhaps if you can try and imagine it as more of a 3D form really. So I've turned the opacity up and the size of the brush down. I'm going to go for a, a lighter version just to really focus the eye in certain areas. Again, some sort of broken texture, kind of mottled look to it would be good. And some more in and around different areas too. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on another layer, going back and creating some more stars this time. So I'm going to stick with some cooler colours. I'm going to concentrate the cooler stars around the kind of outskirts and then I'll do a series of warmer ones and keep those concentrated towards the centre. I'm going to turn the opacity up, put it back to a hard brush this time because I only want some really strong spots of light. So I'm going to go move to the warmer versions now and I'm going to start picking out some of the, the warmer colours perhaps more towards the centre. Turn the size up and get some real bright white ones now in there too. So because this is such a, a bright light source compared to the rest of it, it's probably blown out some of that images on camera. So I'm going to turn the brightness way down so that perhaps you can see the detail a bit more on camera. And I'm going to start working in some of the texture into this area now. So I'm going to use quite a dark a red colour. I'm just going to go into some of these areas. So I'm just playing around with some of the colours a little bit now. So maybe use some more of the purples and some of the blues. Have some of the effects mixing together a little bit in areas. Again though, more of the, the blue on the outer edge. So there might be some areas where they mingle together, but Generally, it's more of the blue focused on the outside. So I might just do one or two now, where we're going to get a real bright star in the midst. I'm going to turn the size up and the opacity way down. I might just put one in here, a little bit gradually, and towards the white and reduce the brush size, put it in the centre of there. You should get a really kind of glowing effect then. Brighter, turn the brush size down, more in the centre, continue working get until you get the brightest white right in the middle. So I'm just going to spend a little bit more time now just adding some fine-tuned details, some extra some bright points and little stars around the galaxy spiral and then we'll see what we end up with at the end. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for today. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the demonstration. I'm going to be doing a lot more kind of space art as well as tutorials on how to show different elements like water, fire, skies and landscapes as well. So please check through my playlist. I'll leave them in the description. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to the people that have already been over to my Patreon page and show me some support. I'd like to do this full time in the future and the more support I get, the more videos like this I'm going to be able to create in the future too. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. I hope to catch you back here again.